In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of sampling distributions of the sample proportion, and specifically, we're going to work through a few more practice problems. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So the proportion of adult women in Canada is approximately 55%. A marketing survey telephones 500 people at random. What is the sampling distribution of the observed proportion that are women? So first of all, let's cover what we already have been told. So um, we're told that the sampling proportion has approximately 55% women. So our value for P is equal to 0 0.55. Now, what does that mean? We know that Q is equal to one minus P. So this is equal to one minus 0 0.55, which is equal to 0 0.45. So that means that Q is equal to 0 0.45. We also know our sample size so n is equal to 500. How do we know that? Well, we're told right here that they phoned 500 people at random. So our sample size is five, 500, sorry. What is the sampling distribution of the observed proportion that are women? Well, let's first think about, can we assume a normal distribution here? So are the observations independent of each other? Well. They were phoned at random, so we're going to assume, yes, they were. Is the sample size large enough? Well, 500 people is a fairly healthy sample, so again, we're going to say yes. Was there randomization? Well, yes, they phoned them at random, so that is good. Is 500 less than or equal to 10% of the Canadian population? Well, yes, it is. Of course, there's something like 30 or 35 million people in Canada. 500 would certainly be less than 10%, so yes. And then finally, does n times p greater than or equal to 10? Well, let's check n times p is equal to 500 times 0 0.55 which is equal to 500 times 0 0.55 which is equal to 275 so yes and does n times q greater than or equal to 10 well let's check n times q is equal to 500 times 0 0.45 which is equal to 225. So yes, it is. So all of our assumptions and conditions have been met for a normal distribution. So we're going to assume um, that it has a normal distribution within our sampling frame. So what is the standard deviation of that proportion? So B, the standard deviation So our standard deviation of the proportion of our sample or our standard deviation of p hat is equal to the square root of p times one minus p divided by n. Well, this is, uh, is equal to 0 0.55. We've already calculated one minus p, right? We calculated that right here when we calculated q. So 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 divided by our sample size. In that case, our sample size is 500. So 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 divided by 500. We take the square root of that value and what do we get? We get 0 0.02225 if we round to four decimal points. So that is the standard deviation um, of the proportion. So C, would we be surprised to find 53% of women in a sample size of 500? So C, we know that we can assume a normal distribution because we covered that in A. So let's go ahead and calculate a Z score. So Z is equal to P hat, the observed proportion, minus P, the expected proportion, divided by the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample. So this is equal to 0 0.53 minus 0 
divided by the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample, which we just calculated right here in B, so 0 0.02225. So 0 0.53 minus 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.02225 gives us a z-score of negative 0 0.90 if we're rounding to two decimal points. So we go ahead and we can envision this. So we'll draw our standard normal curve, looks something like this, centered around a z-score of zero. And what did we get? We got a z-score of negative 0 0.90. So one of the things we have to ask ourselves is how common is this? Uh, what's the probability that we might see a value less than that? So let's just go less than that. What is the probability we see a value less than or equal to 0 0.53? Well, that's the same thing as saying the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 0 0.90 is equal to, well, let's go to our Z score and look up negative 0 0.90. So our Z score here, we have the area to the left and negative 0.90 is right here. So it is 0 0.18406, 0 0.18406. In other words, uh, almost 20% of the time we expect to see a value that's equal to 53% or less, or one in five times. So this happens with uh, fairly regularly, like one in five times is pretty common. Um, so we're not all that surprised to see a proportion of women to be 53% in a survey of 500. Um, it's just not that shocking to us. Okay, uh, D, would we be surprised to find 45% of women in a sample size of 500? Well, let's, let's check it out. So D, so Z is equal to the observed proportion minus the proportion of the population divided by the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample. So 0 0.45, that's the value in question, minus 0 0.55, right, divided by the standard deviation of the proportion of our sample, which is 0 0.02225. So 0 0.45 minus 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.02225 gives us a z-score of negative 4.49. So we can envision this right here. We have our standard normal curve, looks like this. And we're asking about a z-score that's associated with negative 4.49. So what's the probability that we see that value or less? Let's go ahead and look at our Z table. So we'll just erase this, just we've already dealt with that. So let's go ahead and look to the top here. Well, the smallest number that we have on our Z table is negative 3.99, which has a probability of 0 0.00003. Negative 4.89 is less than negative 3.99. And since our Z table maxes out, all we have to do here is say the probability that Z is less than or equal to negative 4.49 is less than 0 0.000, let's just get a double check of that probability, 0 0.0003. In other words, this does not happen very often. Or alternatively, if we wanted to do that, the probability that Z is greater than or equal to negative 4.49 is going to be, is equal to one minus um, the probability that Z is less than or equal to 3.99 since that's the maximum. And what we have here is you know, one, one minus 0 0.0003. We have 90, 0 0.9999. And so roughly 
uh, we'd see a larger value than this more than 99.9% .9 of the time. So this value or this observation is very uncommon. And then E, would we be surprised to find that there were fewer than 175 women in the sample? Well, let's just calculate that. So we'll um, just, we'll make some space here. We'll just make some space. So for E, 175 women in the sample. So 175 divided by the sample size of 500. So 175 divided by 500 is 0 0.35. Now we just tested 0 0.45 and we got an extremely small uh, Z score. So we expect it to be small, but just for practice, why not calculate it? So Z is equal to 0 0.35 minus 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.02225. So 0 0.35 minus, minus 0 0.55 divided by 0 0.02225. And we get a Z score of negative, negative 8.99. So basically we can conclude this. So therefore, uh, negative 8.99 is less than negative 4.49 which was less than negative 3.99. So therefore, given what we concluded in D, which was that negative 4.49 or an observed proportion of 45% occurred very infrequently, um, an observation of 35% would occur even less frequently. So with that, we'll just leave the video. We've learned how to continue to learn how to use proportions of our sample um, and calculate our z-scores. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.